Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. We continue to be in the ice box. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey tracking the possibility of record lows straight ahead. An urgent need during these cold days. The Salvation Army needs winter clothing donations, especially for children. How you can help. Steve, I'm just wanting everybody to watch their dogs. It is, it's going crazy these days. A possible theft ring targeting dogs in one central Kentucky county. The warning from investigators. WKYT News at 11 starts now. Good evening to you. No break from the Arctic blast. This was the coldest November day in Lexington in nearly 40 years. That is pretty impressive. And the temperature tomorrow morning could set a new record. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. He is tracking this Arctic air. Chris? Yeah, this is pretty incredible stuff, guys. I mean, you got to go back to 1976, late November 76, on the 29th, to find a day that was as cold as the one we just had for the month of November. Ridiculous cold out there. Wind chill still late this evening. It's five degrees in Lexington, six degrees. That's what it feels like. Those are the numbers to dress for. That six is into Mount Sterling. What about your temperatures as of now? 14 in Lexington and Mount Sterling. It's 12 into Frankfort. I'm looking at a temperature gauge up in Harrison County that is telling me it is 7 degrees right now, not too far away from Cynthiana, where you have still two, three inches of snow on the ground. That 14, by the way, is very close to a record low already for tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's record is 14. From 1951. So as the clock hits midnight, coming up here in about an hour, if we're still at 14 degrees, we've at least tied the record. I think we'll drop it a degree or two before temperatures come up tomorrow. So that new record is likely to fall, and it may go by the wayside as early as one or two o'clock in the morning. That's just absolutely nuts. This is one of the more impressive air masses given the season that I've seen in a long, long time. Arctic cold across Kentucky. I'm tracking a reinforcing shot of Arctic cold, guys, that rolls in from northwest to southeast. This one may throw a little snowflake action at us about this time tomorrow night. We'll talk about the increasing possibility of some light snows when I come back in a moment. All right. Thank you, Chris. Volunteers with the Salvation Army have been working long hours this week trying to help people stay warm. But tonight they are running out of coats and gloves to give those who need them, especially children, and they worry what might happen without your help. Jerrica Insko continues our first alert weather team coverage. You've been outside, so you know just how cold it is already. Now imagine if you didn't have a coat hat or gloves. The Salvation Army is asking that you think of those without in these bitter temperatures. They've seen people suffer through some brutal winters in Lexington. But last year we had a really cold winter and there was a great need for warm winter items. In the past two weeks that need has arrived early on their doorstep. We can see easily 50 people or more a day coming in for these items. And Major Deborah Ashcraft says they haven't been able to keep up with that demand. This year it seems like it's gotten cold really fast and a bit early. And at the Salvation Army, we've had people coming in asking for winter coats, moms coming in asking for snowsuits for their babies, and we just haven't had those items on hand. Take a look around at the Salvation Army's clothing department. We have a lot of spring type jackets, but as far as winter coats, basically, this is what we have. You soon realize that the need for children, but we need a lot of winter, warm winter scarves, is everywhere you look. This is really what we have for hats, so we've got a couple of hats. The Salvation Army still is proof that the community cares, but this time around, we're really grateful for what we do have, but we clearly need a lot. Um, more items. Your donations are needed sooner than later. You can drop off clothing donations at the Salvation Army located here on Main Street. In Lexington, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. The Salvation Army's clothing store is open to the general public serving men, women, and children. This was a difficult day for anyone who had to work outside, and tomorrow won't be much warmer, as you heard from Chris. Construction workers we talked to say as long as it's not raining or snowing, they'll work outdoors. They say they wore extra layers today. They also took frequent breaks, and they even used an outdoor heater. Workers tell us they try not to think about the cold weather too much. When you keep busy out here, you adapt, and, and your body, your body uh, uh, adapts to it, and you can work very easily. 
The Lexington Fire Department told us they bring in extra staff on a cold day like this one, and that way firefighters can rotate shifts more easily and stay out of the cold as much as possible. Breathitt County Schools will be closed again tomorrow because the county's high school doesn't have heat. Workers are replacing boilers at Breathitt County High, so the school has not had heat since last week. Yesterday, the school tried to use space heaters, but that didn't help. So, Breathitt County Schools canceled classes today and tomorrow. Parents we talked to are not happy. These kids are going to lose two days now because of the heat not being fixed before now. School leaders say they had planned to replace the boilers during this time, and the cold snap just came before they could finish the job. They hope to have the boilers turned on and the heating system working again by tomorrow afternoon. Keep checking the bottom of your screen for the latest school closings and delays. You'll also find a complete list at WKYT.com. Two people died today in separate crashes just hours apart in Boyle County. The first happened around 2 this afternoon on U.S. 150 near Airport Road. The Boyle County Coroner's Office says 67 year old Harrison Harden of Stanford lost control of his car and flipped off the road. He later died at the hospital, but investigators say his 18 month old great grandson was strapped to a car seat and was not injured. Around three hours later, investigators say another driver lost control of his truck on Highway 300 and hit a tree. The coroner's office says a passenger, John Edwards, died at the scene. Investigators say his son was driving. He was taken to the hospital with unknown injuries. We have an alert tonight for dog owners. Thieves could be targeting your pets. In the last week, investigators tell us that seven dogs have been stolen just in Garrett County. And now they wonder if it's all part of a dog theft ring. New at 11 tonight, WKYT's Garrett Weimer talks to the owner of one of those stolen dogs. Favorite toy lies ignored on the floor. It hasn't been chewed since Saturday. Uh, there's been lost sleep, you know, we've been crying, tears, you know, it's just like I have a child gone. But one year old Bruno, the boxer's owners, are convinced their other family member didn't just run off. Lost, stolen dog, cash reward. They think someone stole him. All the latches were off the kennel door and it was shut back. You know, it was just really suspicious. The door was shut back. Sadly, they're not the only ones here in the area going through this same thing. The director of the Garrett County Animal Shelter says she knows of seven full blooded dogs, almost all of them males, that have also turned up missing and they believe have been stolen. Uh, it tells me that probably being used as stud dogs, they can make money off puppies. They probably know where females are, or lined up females. And males are a lot easier to sell than females. Now they're warning other dog owners. Please watch your dogs. I mean, they're going. Usually the missing times are early in the morning or late at night. It's never midday that we get a phone call. So you don't have to go through what they are. I want back. You want him back? Yeah. No. I want back. In Garrett County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. If you have any information about these missing dogs, call the Garrett County Animal Shelter. We have the number on the screen. It will also be on WKYT.com. Tonight, an update on a WKYT investigation into high school football helmet safety that got the attention of school districts and now Lexington City leaders. Today, an urban county government committee heard a motion that would use money given to Tates Creek High School to buy at least five new helmets. The new helmets would have a five star rating from the Virginia Tech rating system that we told you about in that investigation. And so we reached out to WKYT. They were excellent in providing us the background on the story. And how they came up with that information. And then I just came to my colleagues on the council and said, hey, we've got an opportunity to fix something here. And they voted unanimously to take care of it. The motion will be on Thursday's council meeting docket. The council could also consider funding for new five star helmets at other Fayette County high schools. You can see how helmets rank at high schools around the area by going to WKYT.com. Employees at the Lexington office of an international law firm tell WKYT they learned today their jobs are being cut. Last year, Bingham McCutcheon opened a global services center in Coldstream Park with around 200 employees. But the Wall Street Journal reports the firm has struggled to recover from a bad year. And Friday, the firm announced three quarters of its partners will move to a Philadelphia based law firm. A spokesperson with Bingham McCutcheon would not comment on the fate of the Lexington office or its employees. It's the toughest challenge for the Wildcats so far in this new season. Right now, the top ranked UK basketball team playing Kansas up in Indianapolis. Rob Bromley has a look at some of the early highlights. Rob? 
Well, Coach Cal and his platoon system put to the test by number five Kansas, and the Cats come out blocking shot after shot. Look at Alex Poitras. The defense was devastating. Tyler Ulis now at the offensive end. The runner as Kentucky takes an early three point lead. This is awesome. Marcus Lee going with the hook. Like Kareem, Kentucky starting to build a lead. And the Wildcats sprint out to an 18 point lead. Aaron Harrison, beautiful looking three pointer. Kansas did fight back before halftime, got the lead down to eight. Jayhawks breaking down court. Cliff Alexander getting the follow here. The lead was 10 at halftime, 38-28. Then the Cats run off the first three buckets of the second half. Dakari Johnson feeding Marcus Lee there. Right now, the Cats are in control in Indy. They lead it 57-36. Really, it has been an impressive uh, performance, to say the least, so far. And not against any team. Kansas, number five of the nation. Sam Amber, back to you. Thank you, Rob. The U.S. Senate has stopped a controversial oil pipeline for now, but Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell says it will get another chance. That's coming up in 10 minutes. And could you imagine this much snow outside your home in western New York State? They are measuring it by the feet. When you see these next pictures, we have nothing to complain about, really. No. Tonight, a massive lake effect snowstorm continues to dump feet of snow on parts of New York State. Yeah, parts of the Buffalo area have already seen up to four feet of snow, and it may end up being more like six feet by the time the storm ends. More than 100 vehicles have been stranded on the New York Thruway. Some people have been stuck for more than 24 hours. The National Guard has been called in to help. Authorities say at least four deaths have been blamed on this storm. Tonight, the U.S. Senate narrowly defeated a bill to approve the Keystone XL oil pipeline. 59 senators voted in favor of the bill, but it needed 60 votes to be sent to President Obama. The president said he didn't support the bill. The pipeline would have carried Canadian crude oil through the U.S. to the Gulf Coast. Opponents call it a threat to the environment, but Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell, who will be the next Senate Majority Leader, said the new Republican majority in the Senate will take up the bill next year and likely pass it. A lawsuit has been filed against a man accused of scamming investors out of millions of dollars. Kenneth Thomas owned Retire America, but Lexington police charged him with theft and fraud. In the lawsuit, a former client claims she and her husband invested more than a million dollars, their life savings, with Thomas. She says after her husband died, Thomas told her their cash investment was gone. Court documents also claim Thomas's secretary, Shannon Hurst, used money invested with the company to pay her rent and other personal bills. She's also been charged with theft. The Salvation Army in Lexington needs your help to make its biggest fundraiser of the year a success. The annual Red Kettle campaign has started. The Salvation Army needs hundreds of volunteers to ring those bells alongside those kettles around central Kentucky. This year, the Salvation Army hopes to raise $555,000 through the Red Kettle campaign. When you stand out there ringing the bell in the cold, you can feel good that a child who is homeless will have a warm place to sleep tonight because of your sacrifice that you're making. You can also donate to the Kettle Campaign online. You can find out how to do that, or you can volunteer on WKYT.com.